There once was a time when trains dominated the land of Jamaica, and it wasn't a simple thing either. The system was actually quite robust. At one point, it went from Port Antonio all the way to Montego Bay. Like, look at this. Now, basically, the entire country this. I mean, Trelawney not really including, but we don't have to really watch him. But Mrs. Sentan also not included, so we're going to put a one line right here, so, and boom, completed. Basically, the entire country this, right? Either way, we have to admit, this was a truly remarkable achievement. Construction of the first train line began in 1845, which made Jamaica the second British colony to have received a railway. The distance was 23 kilometers long, and it went from Kingston all the way to Spanish Town. Now, these first lines were built mainly because of two reasons. The Slavery Abolition Act and the Sugar Duties Act. The Slavery Abolition Act was a legislation which abolished slavery throughout the British Empire. And the Sugar Duties Act was a legislation that removed preferential treatment from sugar imported from colony nations. Now, the slavery one, straightforward, I mean, I think we really need to explain that one. So, I'll explain the Sugar Duties Act. So, basically, colony nations, aka countries under British control, never really had to pay certain taxes when they exported their goods to the UK. So, just call it said they were getting some kind of special treatment. Well, the Sugar Duties Act basically take away all of them special treatment there and then get treated just like everyone. Else. And that's basically it. These are the circumstances that eventually led to the first train being built in Jamaica. It wasn't really built to initially carry people around, but really was more of a lifeline to sugar farmers who were looking for cheaper ways to transport their goods. The budget for the first single track section was £150,000. But you know as usual, it went over budget and instead the total was closer to £220,000 and it was 23 kilometers long so this works out to about £9,500 per kilometer. Now, since we're already talking numbers, let's get even more creative with it and try to match out how much would it cost to build these same train lines in Jamaica today. Now, by doing just some rough maths out of my head, I already can predict that building a modern train system in Jamaica would likely cost over a billion US dollars. A whole heap of money that's still enough. But let's pencil it out just to be sure. We're going to be using these same lines, but our starting point is going to be the Kingston to Spanish Town leg, which we already know was 23 kilometers long. Now, luckily for us, the new Maypen to Williamsfield Highway is also 23 kilometers long. This makes calculating things a lot easier for we. So now we know that the cost to develop this highway was 188 million US dollars. So let's just assume that the train line would cost the same. I mean, yes, in some cases it can cost less, in some cases it can cost more. But you know, there's a lot of nuance with that. So it doesn't really make sense we're going into all of that. So we're just going to assume so that if we build the train line, it would cost the same 188 million US dollars. All right. Now that gets us a train line from Spanish Town to Kingston, Kingston to Spanish Town. Good. Now, as you can see, I'm going to start at some more lines on the map. And you can see how quickly the prices starts to balloon. Which takes us to the next topic. Which is better, train lines or highways? Now, it's not as black and white. There are drawbacks and there are benefits to both infrastructure. So, let's do a simple comparison. Starting with price. Train lines can be cheaper, but can also be more expensive. Two new ones, so I can just do it 50-50, each one get a pint. Capacity. Highways as a virtually uncapped capacity. Any amount of care can drive past the highway any given day, while the train can only hold a certain amount of people. So, for capacity, the point goes to the highway. Accessibility. The highway is accessible 24-7. Hear me out on this one, please. Don't rush to conclusion. Now, that's only if you have a vehicle. The train don't need a vehicle, but... There are going to be times when it closes or you have to wait a good while for the train to come. Nevertheless, I still give it to the train because the train is really and truly accessible to everyone. You don't need nothing. Pitney, mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, anybody can take the train. Maintenance. Train lines are slightly cheaper to maintain than roads. However, the entire system itself makes it very complicated. While road, simple patch up. There's a one patch up, fix it. There's a one patch up, fix it. So, trains, while it's cheaper in some cases, it can get really messy quick. The road is straightforward, easy. So, for the ease of maintenance, I'm going to give it to the highway. Economics. Most railways are just not profitable at all, and they are usually heavily subsidized by the state. While highways, yes, enough really make money, but you drop a one tool boot on it and you start laughing straight to the bank daily, right? So, <laughs> easy, easy one for the highway. As you can see, yes, the highway won, but even with all of that, what we just do a while ago. Even with all of that said, I still believe a cross-country train network would be a great addition to the country as a whole. Maybe we won't receive a return on investment on our cash, but we'll definitely see a return on investment on our citizens. Which brings us to my ideal scenario. 
which is a combination of trains, highways, trams and buses. The trams would be perfect for getting people around the city. The trains would be perfect for getting people in and out the city and the highways are there for who want to drive. And then the buses could go some more country road where you know so you can't really justify having a train or a tram going. Right? And I think that would be the best and most ideal scenario for a small country like Jamaica.